on May the 1st, 2022. I did an unboxing video because Kateba Orhide was so kind to send me some divisions and one of those divisions was a superb piece of her Prostechia Radiata. July 22 came about and the division showed me it was time to pot her up in my preferred setup which is lacquer and self-watering. Spike or not? Here we are at the end of April 2023 and Sunita Gladstone left me a comment about her specimen radiata, pretty much confirming that no matter what Prostechia comes into a collection, the genus is vigorous and I am in for a treat the more mature my division settles in. Speaking of settling in, Sunita asked for an update because after all, there was a masterclass video on potting up bare root orchids in September in which I applied the same principles when I potted up my radiata. So thank you for the update request, Sunita. Let's have a look at how she coped with my winter. She doesn't look much different, does she? <laughs> oh, but wait. The growth that was in its infancy back in July of 2022 has matured, even though not to full size, but that is to be expected after coming all the way across Europe, being cut from the mother plant and then plonked into Lekka, bloomed with a pretty little spike and highly honeysuckled blooms, which I did not cut off prematurely to reduce the workload on this orchid. So all in all, her first year with me was radical treatment. Radical. Radiata. Get it? Get it? <laughs> anyway, after all that stress, she didn't even absorb the old spike while dealing with the southern Spanish winter, which is not kind for a warm to hot grower. So I'm really pleased that she took to the conditions well, grew more roots throughout the winter months, and another eye is already swelling right on time for the growth season of 2023. But that is not all. She is also growing a spike of all things. And yes, I'm going to let her bloom on this spike seeing as we're dealing with a tough prostechia that can clearly handle all the adverse variables and still grow and bloom. Thank you for clicking on this video. Your time, interest and support is very much appreciated. And if you would be so generous as to show the channel some more love, please like the video, come over and subscribe for more videos like this, past, present and future. Know that you're just as welcome if this is your first time on the channel as everyone who has been with me from Jump. Thank you so much for being here. So, a quick recap of how I cared for this division when she was first potted up. I encouraged the root growth during the warm months I had left last year by flushing the pot like a woman possessed because I needed the roots to grow fast, get settled in and start doing their job seeing as fall was around the corner. Up until mid-November, I supplemented heavily with cow mag and seaweed, basically focusing solely on the root growth, not focusing on the new growth and trying to get it to grow to size. The reservoir was always full with 60 parts per million of cow mag and 40 parts per million of seaweed after every flush with plain RO water. I fertilized mainly with calcium nitrate once the orchid was indoors, giving 100 parts per million every time the reservoir was empty. I flushed the pot prior to filling the reservoir again, but I never filled the reservoir to full capacity, seeing as we have hey, a warm to hot grower and Lekka <clears throat> with its fabulous evaporative cooling effect. Yeah, that could have been an issue and I was not going to risk anything taking out the new root system. So I was very reluctant to fill my reservoir to capacity, but it seemed to have worked. She came through and the roots that were growing in 2022, <laughs> they're still doing fine. Anyway, because I was more focused on the calcium, etc., as the growth matured, it was never going to grow to size anyway, considering everything I've just mentioned. But having said that, when you think of how little balanced fertilizer went into the pot and the low light levels this high light loving orchid was exposed to, I am still impressed with the size of the growth. <laughs> Probably nothing to do with me, prostechias, you know? Gotta love the vigor. So yeah, low light levels in southern Spain, I hear you ask? Yes, I do not use my artificial lighting, nor do I heat my grow space. That is just not in the budget throughout the course of five months. And this orchid was not on the rotor for the great outdoors, 
when I was hunting light and warm pockets on the patio for the majority of my collection. So she was dealing with Phalaenopsis complex hybrid light levels. Being a highlight loving orchid, let's just say she was in perpetual darkness from her perspective. Now, why didn't I move her out and benefit from warm pockets and light from the winter sun? Well, the new roots that were growing throughout July, they needed to stay in the pot without me jiggling the orchid around too much, causing abrasions, possibly damaging the velamen. So she went indoors and she stayed indoors. The only movement I gave her was when I flushed her and filled the reservoir. Now though, she is on the east side shelf behind a white curtain, which makes for a very high light location. It is also warm enough on that side because the terracotta is heating up nicely. So moving forward, I'm expecting an enjoyable growing season with my radiata. One growth will make me happy. I can fertilize up to 300 parts per million now, fill the reservoir to capacity, flush every time the reservoir is absorbed. Season 2 on the patio has started for my radiata and well, maybe one day I will have a specimen the likes of which you describe yours is, Sunita. <laughs> oh yes, the transition into Lekka and self-watering, easy peasy with an orchid that comes bare root and starts pushing new roots. It's a doddle. What happened with the previous roots that I left in the pot, whether they made it or not, I cannot say with certainty, but knowing the genus is not a fussy root grower, I am sure that they did their job for the duration of the transition until the new roots took over. I never saw the pseudobulbs really shrivel to a degree that would have set off my alarm bells. So if you were considering this setup, but were not entirely sure if your radiata would handle the transition, I'm here to tell you, go for it. The moment new roots appear, take the plunge, do what you would normally do with any repot of any orchid, and instead of using your standard media, switch it up with Lekka, and this drinker will thank you for it. And probably you won't have such a workload to keep up with the watering and its other needs. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Another suggestion I have is if you would like to check out the other videos I have highlighted in this video with their thumbnails, I have linked them in the description. As I have several prostechias, the How's It Growing video could be of interest to you. You will discover a reoccurring theme in that video though, spoiler alert, big girl. <laughs> Love me some prostechias. As a matter of fact, side note, you could actually name a cultivar Hakuna Matata <laughs> because that pretty much summarizes everything about the prostechia, be it the radiata or any others. They just grow and thrive and go into beast mode very, very quickly. Thank you, Sunita, for your request. I hope that this video gave you a giggle, my little division compared to your specimen. But I also hope that it answered any consideration you may have had. Let me just take a moment to add that. In all my descriptions, I mention one thing. Make this channel work for you. So if you have anything that you would like me to focus on, be it an orchid or a subject, a question, follow Sunita's example and ask away. And if you have already asked, but a video is pending, know that I'm working on it. I have not forgotten you. Some videos take a little bit longer. Others can happen much, much quicker. And then there is this weird thing that takes me away from the patio called life. It's so annoying. Anyway, know that you can ask any question and I will get an answer to you. If I don't know it, I will find out and point you in the right direction. So lastly, thank you so very much for watching. I wish you all a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.